and when this client because my ideal clients are christians Mm -hmm. and first of all when she dm'd me she literally had like a verse in her like name and i'm like oh my gosh she could be meant to be and we call them dream clients in my world because look at that they are a dream did this client hesitate at all when it came when you set the price not (laughs) at all in fact i woke up to her payment the net like when i was finalizing it all not at all she did not hesitate hello (laughs) hey justine how are you good how are you Okay, everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we have a special designer who has been with me since I converted into a coach. Um, Joy is here with us today, who's going to share her story. She is literally a gem because she took a chance with me (laughs) when I had no experience coaching. Um, And to know that we've evolved and continue to grow um, in my business and in hers, it's pretty a magical thing. So it's been over a year since I've known Joy. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story because she's had some monumental, monumental wins over the past year and a half. And I will let you take over, Joy. So tell us, who are you? Where's your business? All that good stuff. Hi, everyone. My name is Joy. I'm the owner of Joy to Events. I'm located in Richmond, Virginia. I specialize in balloon designs. So yeah, that's me and yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So how long have you been doing your balloon business? Over a year now. So I started April of 2020. So like a month after the pandemic. So it's been a year and four months now. Wow. A lot of people have said that they, I've jumped on a bunch of calls and a lot of people are always saying that they have started their business. A lot of people who find me now started in the pandemic. So I didn't even know that you started the same around the same time that we got together. <laughs> exactly. And I was thinking about that the other day. It's so crazy. And this is how I know that we were meant to be because literally in my first month of starting, that's how we met. I think I was like a week or two in. Oh my goodness. And I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> I always find crazy things when I'm talking to my designers, things that I didn't even know. And it's a shame. I should get to know you guys a lot more. But wow. So I started my business pivoting in April. And you were the first designer who kind of jumped on the opportunity to work with me. But before we get there, what I would love to know is just like, what sparked you to do balloons versus like anything else in the event industry or kind of take us back into who you were and how did you even end up being so creative? Yeah, so I know, you know, I said I started in a pandemic, but really I felt like this was just always meant to be. Um, So basically when I was a little girl, I used to like to decorate. I was the girl in the class who wanted to write on the poster for the presentation and things like that. So I would always decorate for my mom's birthday every year. So in the pandemic, I would just always say, I want to do something with events, but I really didn't know what to do. So I went on Walmart and I ordered a balloon kit and that's when I started. And then I wanted to do everything with events. So I was doing balloons and then I was doing treats. We were just- (laughs) Yes, I remember. (laughs) Yeah. So then that's when I think I made like one post. My first post was April 1st. And then I met you and you were like, post something. So that's when I used my balloon kit and I did like a little garland. It was awful. And you told me (laughs) to find one thing to do. And I knew it wasn't treats and balloons just was so meant to be. So that's how I got into balloons was it just made sense. Mm. And it was in me all along. So balloons is that's how I got into it. Yeah. And look at you now. So like we're going to do a lot of like back and forth um, when it comes to your business so tell us where you are now because literally we started the same time (laughs) where so where is your business now so now balloons since I've gotten so much better and I know how to market and things like that um it's really steady I'm averaging about two to three clients a month this month I'm booked four weeks in a row so that's pretty steady I'm starting to get more into backdrops than just balloon garlands because higher ticket prices. Mm -hmm. So I have some new things coming in stock. So I'm just really excited. And now 
I'm not just working by myself. I work with three event planners now. So three. <laughs> Not one, but three. Oh my goodness. Collaborating with the, an event planner definitely will pick up your business too. Right. That makes sense too, right? Collaborating with the right people in the industry, right. you know, and then it's sometimes hard to create that partnership with people um, because other event decorators, I'm calling people out who want to do it all, don't allow room in for people like you know, you, Joy, who's doing balloons and Amber, who's doing balloons versus Leslie, who was doing customized treats. Because when you make room for other people, you're more blessed, I feel like, too. So right. Let's go with the challenges. So when we first met, what were some of the challenges that you were going with through with your business? Limiting release, not charging my worth. And I was still so new, not knowing, I'm going to just say, not knowing how to get clients, not knowing how to price. Um, so not knowing how to price and not getting any clients at all. Wow. So yeah. what about those beliefs? Cause a lot of people don't know what a limiting belief is. Like, can you share like one belief that probably was like a strong one that avoided you from getting clients in the door? Money. And that's <laughs> something I would go back and forth with Justine about when she knows money. <laughs> I would be sitting here trying to charge $25 things. And she's like, joy joy how is that going to get you profit <laughs> and i'll be like i would try to explain and it wouldn't make sense but what i really realized was she was my coach and she's supposed to push me and it didn't sound good at the time it was like 25 dollars, ain't nobody paying that much and i look back at it and i'm like girl <laughs> what is 25 dollars gonna do <laughs> like, what did you tell yourself i guess back then um because it's been a year it hasn't been that much time and you've grown so much since then um and I definitely agree the money money mindset was huge it was like mm -hmm. a pushback in fact just to be honest with everybody is that the first four weeks she didn't even charge what she's charging now we'll talk about that as we progress forward so when we met back up again it was still the same mindset that was there right so what would you tell yourself or someone else who's kind of suffering and going through the same thing as you? Yeah, I would tell them all it takes is doing one event, right? And it's so much preparation that goes into it. And don't think about just the product because yeah, a hundred pack of balloons can cost you $20, but the service, right? Fishing line, how, what, you know, the labor, putting it in your car, taking it there and setting up and setting up is like a whole nother ball game. Awesome. And thank you for sharing. Um, because I know sometimes when we reflect, it's just not the prettiest times and experiences, but I feel like you take those experiences because when you fail, as I've taught you and everybody else who comes into my world, take failures as lessons, right? Right. And I don't, although I push my designers to really come out of their comfort zone if they don't that's okay too that's why I didn't push too hard because I know you're going to fail I know yeah. it's going to be a rough beginning and it's up to you to decide when you're finally like done with doing the crazy challenging way to making it a lot more easier to create that momentum so let's again we're going to do a lot of bouncing so right now well, how much, if you don't mind sharing, how much do you charge or what's the highest balloon um, display have you charged for? 340. $340. So you went from $25 mm -hmm. to charging $340 for your services. Wow. That's amazing, Joy. Yes. I'm so proud of you. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of Mustard. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Wow. And you know what, guys, she's still in um, my coaching program and probably like a CEO. I feel like when we push ourselves continuously outside of our comfort zone, there's magic on the other side, right? There's a lot of blessings and things you never thought would occur, occur. So kudos to you. All right. So kind of walk me through where your mindset was, what was still challenging and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes those like that, money that bad money mindset can creep back in especially maybe you go through a season where you don't have clients and you're like it can make you dumb down your prices 
Mm. But just staying true to who you are and knowing that this is a talent. And I think I saw online, it was like, parties are a luxury. They're not a necessity. So, (laughs) and if you want the Dollar Tree way, I mean, you could do it yourself, but really not letting down on your prices and knowing maybe you have a slow season, but still keep going and keep pushing. So I think I went through like a slow season where I was getting like one, one a month. And that kind of discouraged me because I'm like, are my prices too high? And it's like, they're not, you actually need to increase them, but -hmm. it can be easy to forget your craft, to lower your prices and just to give up, honestly. Right. That power is so funny. I was reading a book. It's called you're a bad and it's a bad word, but (laughs) the last two chapters, one talks about tenacity. And that's the resilience. That's the persistence that you keep going through. And said, in fact, she said it because she's a very successful author who went from being poor and broke to, I think she's making over a million dollars now. But she said the most successful people will go walk through fire. Like it's inevitable. In fact, you'll constantly be tested, right? And I know, Joy, we'll talk about like your beliefs too and who your ideal client is because it's a little different than most people. But to know that you're constantly resilient, to push past what is in your reality right now, but you know there's a vision, right, of what where you want to be, where you want to take your business, that takes a lot. That takes a lot of resilience. That takes a lot of over- overcoming fears. Like, you know, were you did you have any fears when you kind of came back and knowing that you were only getting one client? Yeah, it was fear. And it can keep you down and especially Instagram it's easy to compare yourself Mm -hmm. it is and you see all these people doing all these things and booked and busy and it's like here I am but just stay faithful and stay in the moment and I feel like whenever I wanted to give up or just stop God would always send something like send an event planner or he would send an extra client so I just I'm in it for the long run I'm not giving up Mm -hmm. so here I am. I'm not giving up. Right. There you go. That's good. And you need that because guess what? You're going to be tested. So Joy, as she kind of alluded to what she believes in, she believes in God and I do too, but she's a lot more educated biblically when it comes to understanding. I remember you helped me with my live session. You're like, here it is. I was like, thank you. I know, <laughs> I knew it's, there. You I know it's yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so walk us through like you know, your faith with God and how, you know, you continue to push past that because a lot of my designers do believe in God, right? And I always say, I don't care what you believe in, right? If you have a belief in anything, including yourself, right? Stick with that. But what does that mean for you and your business? How have you seen your blessings unfold? Everything, just staying faithful. That's like my favorite word, faithful, that God will do what he said he would. I don't think I just woke up and started this business by accident, you know? So Mm -hmm. just staying faithful and trusting him, because like I said, when I get discouraged, I go to my Bible plan and that's what keeps me going because it's not going to be easy, but knowing that you serve a God who can be there for you. And when you're lonely, he's there and know that if you put in the work, he's going to send the people to come. And it doesn't matter who supports you or not. I really believe that without a shadow of a doubt that God sends clients my way because (laughs) sometimes like he really does. He sends clients my way and they believe in me. You know what I mean? And that's just so important. Just trusting God in every season when it's good, when it's busy and when it's slow and knowing that he's just there for you. So knowing he's there for me is just enough and all I need. Wow. Ooh, I'm getting chills. I love, <laughs> I love it because it's so true, right? And I think when you have a belief and you surrender, and this goes with any faith, like if someone believes in just like the universe, right? It's still the same. If you surrender and let go of what's in front of you and not worry about the no's and people saying you can't yeah. do it, right? And you have faith to know that it will come into fruition. That's all I can work with that and make magic from that alone. Because when you, it's when you don't have the belief that it will work out. That's the hardest person to coach. I can't coach someone who doesn't believe in themselves or in their business. So I love how you said that. And you know, I have a tattoo right here that says, I love it. 
because yeah. I have to constantly remind myself like faith is, you know, God is always for me. Everything, every no that comes my way is a blessing because whew, it wasn't a headache. <laughs> So let's talk about when we re-entered our world um, when it comes to coaching. So kind of walk me through what was going on in your mindset, because in my perspective, it seemed like you were pretty quiet, you were kind of reserved, you know, and then we started connecting with the designers all together. So we started to create a community and a lot of wins were going on within that, you know, chat and that group. And I wanted to know, like, what was what was going on for you? I know you got booked out one month too, so let's talk about the journey. So let's say the first month, if you can remember, or the first few weeks, what was going on with you? Yeah, I was just kind of like zeroing everything out and just really focusing on my business. And I don't want to say I regret that, but it makes a difference when you're around other designers like you. So I really wasn't. I want to say I wasn't getting that momentum, but I'm back now. (laughs) (laughs) She's back. (laughs) But I really wasn't talking to anyone. And I was just business, business, business. And I don't want to say that's, it's good to stay focused, but you need to be around like-minded people like you, you know, to share your wins and get that boost. Because who knows, maybe if I would have been back around, I would have been booked out another month, you know? Right, right. So right. just staying around people, other designers, a community. We yeah. all need community because that keeps us going versus me just, you know, if I'm stuck, it's just me, but. It's awesome. And that's okay too, right? Like sometimes I feel like your experience is just the right amount of ex- whatever happened for you right? Maybe it would have been very overwhelming if you were very involved, you know, and Uh instead of just being focused, maybe you could have compared yourself with other people's wins versus what you were getting. So I always say whatever happened was for you at that moment in time. So you had a really good month, one month, I believe. I was trying to look through your wins, um, but there was one time and I screenshot and I always share it. You had booked out a full month of like, like one event like each week and it I was, was like for last year right and we went from guys we went from zero to one to getting booked out uh-huh. every single week for an entire month so kind yeah. of walk us through what do you think helped with that when it came to your bookings oh my goodness Justine I was really getting no clients mm-hmm. for real nothing <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, I think it was just me getting better with my designs, y'all. I started off, I think my first design was really on the floor and Justine was like, hang it up. <laughs> so it's it started with that. And then I got, I started doing designs in my house because it took me three months to get my first real client. My first client was my sister, but it took me three months. And it's like, I just kept building on that. And literally when I posted that picture, I got a booking and then I got another booking and it was just, I think seeing it in different places, people were like, okay, she legit, you know, she's actually doing this, not just in her house. And that's how I, that's how it built up for me. So like 90% of my customers come through Instagram. And even if I do get referrals, most likely they've come on my Instagram and they, they had a relative there who saw me and took my card or something like that. So a lot of my stuff comes from Instagram. So Instagram was a blessing for Joy to Events. That's how I, <laughs> that's how um, everything, that's how I got my client base is through Instagram, even meeting the event planners, Instagram. That was awesome. And yes, you have jumped out of your comfort zone a lot. I think you came in out of all of my designers, not because it's a bad thing. You just came in with a lot of resistance right? And that stems from things that we've evolved into who we are now. And every single person who was part of my coaching program when I first launched it had a special quality and special results like no other I've ever seen in my entire life. And I love that Joy was a little more resistant because it made coaching more of a challenge to like, if I could get Joy results, like how everybody else is getting, then that means like, I already know I have something. And when I saw that, that text and comment, I was like, oh my God, 
<laughs> I, I was proud of everyone's results, right? I was proud of everyone's testimonials, everyone's like success and wins. Oh my goodness, it was such a flood. But when I saw Joy with back to back clients for an entire month, that yeah. was uh, like such a miracle for me because not because I didn't think it would happen, but because I doubted myself as a coach. And I'm like, I don't know, like if I can't get Joy results, then maybe it's not you know, something I can do for everyone. But when I did it, it kind of just like, you know, I always tell people, I said this in my last video, I said, don't seek validation, right? So even testimonials from my designers shouldn't, I shouldn't have validation. What it should have is confirmation. Every yeah. way my designers get in my program, it's just confirming what I already know to be true. So Joy was the last one. She wasn't the last one to get win. She was just the last one to solidify like, all right, we're going to take this coaching thing serious now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I don't want to say I'm young, but what was I like? Night, I started my business at 20 and I feel like I've grown in a year. Like business will really grow you. And even the thing with money, right? I thought, you know, a certain amount of money was a lot, but as I got older and I got more, you know, responsibilities, it showed me that's not a lot of money, girl, you know? So I feel like this business has grown me as an individual too, which is, I guess like I'm a reflection of my business. And because I've grown, I felt like it has allowed my business to grow too. That's good. Yes, yes. I said this in too in another video also, like you're gonna, I even said this on my TikTok. I was like, you're gonna go through everything that you have to work on quickly as an entrepreneur yeah. versus anything else, right? Because if anybody else is at a nine to five, like they don't, they can't catch the lessons sometimes. So then you get different types of lessons. And if you believe in God, I always feel like things are completely aligned to help you with your growth. But being an entrepreneur, oh, yeah. you're going to face that every single day okay. with every single person you meet. Good not such a good experience either way it's for you so I'm glad you definitely shared that because like I said you have come a long way so when it came to coaching we talked about the challenges um, that you were facing and some of the wins that you went through kind of walk me through what worked for you right what were the things that you kind of really helped change the game for your business to know how much to charge and all these other things. So I'll let you kind of answer that however you want to answer it. Yeah. So with Justine's coaching program, we had homework assignments and that's when I got time to really like write down every thought I was thinking. And I think one time she made me figure out like how much it costs, like how much the balloons cost, like what do I want to get paid an hour? And that showed me when I was undercharging. So that helped me up my pricing. As I said, Instagram um, is where it's at for me, but Justine's tips, right? So before I didn't know what I was doing, I would just put like um, balloon garland DM to book. And she's like, Joel, you have to show everything you're offering. So somebody wants to book you. And, th and then the pricing part, I wasn't calculating anything. I was just picking, I was just buying balloons and putting it together, putting a price on it, you know, that I thought it was so right right and I know the biggest thing too when people start tracking their time um yeah. you'd be surprised at how much time oh goes because a lot of people think oh just set it up oh no there's a lot of the time that's beforehand that we even talk about like communication with your clients shopping like, and with this balloon shortage right there you go you really <laughs> need more time than ever yeah. <laughs> make sure you can go to the right supplier who has the right colors because we all know we love our clients right I really do love them because they are so creative but let me tell y'all y'all be choosing the most like it's not a purple it's more like a violet blue I'm like yeah <laughs> I'm yeah and I want to say something too Justine like time that's so important because I'm a student right so Saturdays are my free days but most you know most um, events take place on Saturdays. So you're taking away time from your family, time for your friends, time to just rest. And I mean, time, you can't get time back. So mm -hmm. 
definitely looking at how long it takes to set up and everything like that will make you charge your work. And not even that, balloons are so physical yeah. that my back hurts after the install, my feet hurt, I'm hungry, I'm tired. And I think that was another th- another thing that made me boost my pricing when I was seeing the time it took me and the time that um, I don't have to spend with my family because I'm bringing joy to someone else's event. Mm. So that's a factor too. Yeah, it does. And okay, so I was just thinking about like, I think you had a really rough time with one of your designs. Like the weather was a factor. Can you kind of share... <laughs> Sometimes it really takes a lesson. And I did some letter balloon bouquets and (laughs) I stuffed them in the car and it was raining and I didn't think to put balloon bags in them. So I'm running in and out the client's house with wet balloons. So when I get inside, it's so wet and I don't have nothing to wipe them off. So everything is fidgety. The tape has fallen off and it was just a disaster. Thank God the client you know, they didn't beat me up for it. But sometimes I think it takes a learning lesson. Like I remember um, I did an outdoor event and I did columns, right? And I didn't put a heavy weight at the bottom. So the, <laughs> the wind is knocking it down and it really takes that lesson. So like, do not beat yourself up. I don't regret it at all because when I hear it's about to rain, I'll get some balloon bags so quick. <laughs> So it just took that lesson. Sometimes I'm like, if you don't go through it, how will you know? Right. You know, how would I not know now to put a weight on a column? That's why you always ask indoor or outdoor events, mm. then charge accordingly as well. So those lessons, you know, you're going to have failed events. It just, it is what it is. But as long as you learn from them, right, the right. learning experiences are gems. <laughs> they're the hardest lessons but I'm yeah. telling you you probably won't make the same mistake twice yeah I remember that I was like oh my goodness like things awesome. that I didn't even think to like recommend joy this is why I created like my little Amazon shop so people can buy things like or at least think about things that you probably need for a balloon business when you're first starting out right because no one yeah. tells you to get balloon bags or like if you can't find balloon bags what's the next thing right so right. I'm sorry, you had to learn that tough lesson. But listen, I got videos out there that showcase. Yeah, y'all better watch them. (laughs) You don't want a disaster. Yeah, and it's something like when you first start, you don't think of those things, like Mm -hmm. bring extra balloons or something. You know, you don't think of those things. So yeah. Right, right. So that's good. That's good to know. Those are good tips, right? I mean, I even think to like advise that, hey, when you go to events, bring. I always bring the packaged balloons because I always order a little more. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever I go to events but some people might not even think like oh I have it all constructed okay oh but what if it pops or what if it (laughs) happens oh man okay so I know you told us like your journey from like $25 to charging $340 I would love to hear because I've never heard about this event or this client um, where you're able to charge that much. So kind of walk us through, like, how did this client find you? I mean, obviously we say Instagram and how did the pricing go? Cause that's a little higher than your normal prices. Like walk us through that. Instagram. So ideal. And when this client, cause my ideal clients are Christians. Mm-hmm. And first of all, when she DM me, she literally had like a verse in her like name and I'm like oh my gosh she could be meant to be and she absolutely was she may be watching it was a pleasure working with you she was so ideal and it was a baby shower it was a teddy bear baby shower and I brought it was a round hoop and it was a specialty so it was like double stuff and things like that so the labor the time I had grown I had a rental item now so I just charged my work and she absolutely loved it. So not being afraid and my balloon garlands went up itself. So that was like an add-on, like the round, the round thing was like an add-on. So I don't know, wow. she found me and it that's was just crazy. amazing. And that's when I say like, what's meant for you will find you, you mm-hmm. know, and you never know who's watching your page too. Oh, that's good. So, Yes. You just never know. And who knows? Your ideal client could be watching your page right now. So be confident in your work. 
you know, mm-hmm. be confident in what you do because you never know who's watching. Right. So yeah. I love that. Yes. Um, in our my coaching program, um, and Joy's been through it a few times. Um, when it comes to identifying your ideal client, right? And we call them dream clients in my world because look at that, they are a dream. Did this client hesitate at all when it came when you set the price? Not <laughs> at all. In fact, I woke up to her payment the ne- like when I was finalizing it all. Not at all. She did not hesitate. She knew what she wanted. She knew she wanted this teddy bear theme. She did not. Ha- I told her, you know being honest with you, double stuff is an extra fee because it's more, pro- she did not hesitate at all. Setup was smooth, no problems at all. And that's something else too. Don't ignore the red flags. You know, she didn't, we didn't go back. On, no, she was perfect. She <laughs> trusted me. And that's something else. Like your client has to trust you. Mm. She trusted me and yeah, I think that's one of my best designs right now too. Yeah, and that's fun exactly. fact, yeah. I was I made I didn't know it was that that event. My I made a um circle arch that I didn't put on my um channel because I was so stressed. It was for my <laughs> baby shower. She's having another baby. Um, actually, when we're recording this right now, it, she's going to be induced tonight. Oh my gosh, <laughs> nephew! In a few hours or maybe a day or so um so I was so stressed I didn't even record it (laughs) I was like I have a little Instagram reel that I've been meaning to put out there but when Joy saw that my picture and she was just like oh my gosh I did something similar and I was like oh yeah yeah it's a teddy bear thing for my sister she goes oh my god (laughs) it's the same thing I was like oh my goodness that's how aligned we are right such a great I was like oh my goodness that's so awesome But I'm glad and I always tell like I love that you say like you know whatever you sell whatever you've shown sells and I want to kind of kind of uh, reiterate what you said to dream clients won't hesitate I want everybody to understand if you're listening to this there are people I'm getting response because that means it's going to resonate with a lot of people there are people out there who won't even bat an eye to that you are like, I'm not even the best. I don't even know what to do. I'm telling you, there's a client that's fully aligned with your business and is waiting for you. But in order to get that client who's willing to pay a higher ticket offer, you have to continue to do the work. Trust and believe that as soon as you shift and as in Joy's world, God will continue to align you with the people who are right for you. And this is only the beginning. Joy, you're so young. And right. you're already like skyrocketing. You know, when I was uh 2021, 20, I, I thought it was just college, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't even think to start a business, but this is something where I love when I have young designers who are taking a chance, even when you are in school or working another job, like, you know what? I want to do this because there's something in you that's pulling you towards this, whatever it is, right? In the industry. So all right, so we are towards the end. We've heard such an incredible journey from you. I absolutely enjoy hearing your story. So I always like to leave with some lessons and tips for designers who might be in the same shoes or were in the same shoes as you. Um, what would you kind of give them like advice or lessons that you've learned along the way? If I could look back, I would say enjoy the journey, right? Like, it's easy to say, like, if you were to tell me I will be selling a design for 300 plus a year ago, I will look at you like, no, I won't. And that's just Actually, the you beginning. were looking at us like, no, I'm not. <laughs> exactly. And it's just the beginning. I know I have a long way to go, but I'm just thankful to God for how far he's brought me, you know, for someone to recommend me, for clients to come to my page. I just don't give up. Mm. Don't give up because you have to keep pressing. Like I could have gave up a year ago when I was selling $25 garlands. And here I am. I got a dream client. It's only up from here. I'm trying yeah, to find a right. This is the more like, exactly. this is your new minimum. Like that's the new minimum up. period. Right. So yeah. just enjoy the journey and don't give up. That's all I can say. And what's for you is going to come, you know, mm. the client, everything what's for you is going to come and don't compare yourself I think Justine said like if you're on your Instagram and you see a design and it's giving you anxiety or something to be 
just unfollow, you know, because it's your journey. My journey is not going to look like yours. Your journey is not going to look like mine, you know. So just what's for you is going to come and enjoy the process, the highs and the lows, because it's all meant to shape you for your purpose. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man, what a great way to end a video. And just to kind of double down on joy um for those of you who are watching you know i created a membership where if you couldn't afford the coaching right i'm giving many lessons on the things that you should be doing in your business it's not only catered to um balloon businesses but i'm gonna get with joy and the rest of my designers to see what inventory they would recommend at each level so that way you have a list and links to that way you're able to know like, okay, if I'm getting zero clients, this is the things that I should invest in when it comes right. to my business in order to get clients in the door. Right. Joy, if people have questions or if they find out like, oh my goodness, she's in my area. Yes. I need her. How can people find you? Joy to events on Instagram and joy to events on Facebook. Yeah. Joy and I will link everything down below in the description and the comment section. Feel free if you DM Joy, just let her know you found her on YouTube so that way she knows because I think it's going to be a cool thing. Um, and who knows, she might bless you with some, you know, some little bit of advice or give you real yeah. insight on, on the coaching of experience with me too, or book her as an as a balloon stylist for your next event. Why not? Yes, <laughs> right? You're not opposed to flying all over the world to go, not at all, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys um thank you so much for watching continue to design your dreams into reality and i'll catch you guys in the next video